NASA has started developing its most ambitious mission, one that could be launched as early as the 2030s. It'll use a heavy-lift rocket like the Falcon Heavy from SpaceX, an in-orbit vehicle with a lifetime of several years, and an atmospheric probe. They'll go to the least explored planet in the solar system, Uranus. What if, in the future, this mission will help us colonize the planet? Let's imagine you're resident on a colony on Uranus. You won't be able to wander around the planet like in a sci-fi movie. Uranus's surface isn't what we're used to. A core of solid rocks and ice is in the very center of the planet, while the upper layer is a shell consisting of a hydrogen-helium atmosphere. In this video, you'll find out how to colonize a planet without a solid surface. What smell will haunt you all your life on Uranus? And most importantly, can you really survive on Uranus? A good project for base construction on Uranus was created back in 1928 by Soviet architect Georgi Krutikov. That's how he imagined the city of the future. Multi-tiered houses would float above the surface of Uranus. Reliable nuclear engines would keep the buildings from falling into the icy abyss. Yet, you would always see mist outside your window, though not as creepy as in the Silent Hill movie, but peaceful with a blue-green haze. The atmosphere of the planet consists of hydrogen, helium, and methane. The latter absorbs red light waves and reflects the blue and green colors that we can see. But all these atmosphere components give off a ridiculously awful smell. If you want to visit a friend from a neighboring floating house, you'll need a spacesuit, because this incredibly beautiful planet stinks like a rotten egg. Your outfit will look like something between a modified astronaut spacesuit and the newly invented gravity jet suit by Gravity Industries, the British aerospace company. Despite such an outfit looking pretty cool, it'll be really heavy. But all of these inconveniences will save you from the minus 224 degrees below zero temperature. After all, Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system. The sun is so far away that it can't heat the planet's atmosphere. But this could also be an advantage, as in the future, the sun will grow larger and high temperatures on Earth will become unbearable. So, escaping to Uranus might be a great solution. Although, the pull of gravity here is only 89% of Earth's. Thus, to control your movement in a bulky suit, you'll need a jetpack and hand nozzles with gas microturbines. And you won't need to worry about what to wear on a date, or more importantly, where to go. You can just float in the atmosphere watching the moon. And not just one for that matter, but 27 moons. Yeah, that's how many of them this planet has. Looks like the deepest level of romance. But all of this will last only until the first rain. That's when the colonists will realize that the beautiful floating buildings aren't quite so resistant to the weather on Uranus. Extreme temperatures and pressure on Uranus turn carbon atoms into diamond crystal fallout. That is the hardest natural mineral on Earth, by the way. So, it's likely that long diamond showers will destroy the super-strong materials of the buildings in the floating colony. In images taken by Voyager 2 in 1986, Uranus seemed to be calm and static. However, observations from the Keck Observatory in 2014 discarded with that theory. Scientists captured many clouds, thunderstorms, and strong winds on the planet. In the Northern Hemisphere, there were eight powerful storms seen. Scientists suppose that these whirlwinds go deep down through the atmosphere. Even the powerful nuclear engines of the colonies won't be able to withstand such storms, and they'll pull the buildings deep into Uranus. Your only chance of escape is if you manage to leave the base in that very uncomfortable suit and send an SOS signal to Earth. But can you survive until help arrives? 
you'll have to wait quite a long time for the rescue ship because Uranus is incredibly far from us. And as the solar system's always in motion, the distance between the Earth and Uranus constantly changes. The shortest distance is 2.6 billion kilometers, and it'll take more than a decade to wait for this ideal trajectory. Moreover, space agencies often take indirect routes, using the gravity of other planets for speed to minimize fuel costs. Voyager 2 was launched in 1977 and only got closest to Uranus in 1986. It took the spaceship just a little less than a decade to reach the ice giant. NASA also considered sending the Cassini probe to Uranus after it finished studying Saturn. But scientists estimated that the journey from the one planet to the other would take 10 years. This is in addition to the seven years that it took Cassini to get to Saturn. That's when they decided to give up on the idea. Even as spaceships of the future move faster, they still wouldn't be able to reach the dying colony on Uranus. After all, the spacecraft will simply have nowhere to land. But will you be able to help yourself on your own? Imagine you managed to leave the colony in a special suit. What's next? The fuel in the jetpack will quickly run out, and then the heavy suit will only pull you down faster towards the core of Uranus. First, you'll fall through the frozen methane clouds, then fly over hydrogen sulfide ice clouds. The further down you go, the darker it'll get, since sunlight can't get to such a depth. Much lower, you'll hear and feel strong winds rushing past you at speeds of up to 900 kilometers per hour. For the next 129 kilometers, you'll be falling into horribly thick, dense, dark clouds. Though the temperature at this depth will still be quite comfortable at just 10 degrees Celsius. But that won't last long. Next, you'll face a chaotic region of towering white icy clouds where static electricity generates huge lightning bolts that will strike right next to you. The temperature will rise to 50 degrees Celsius. And all of this is just the first hour of your fall, during which you'll fly 240 kilometers deep into Uranus. There goes the mantle, a bottomless icy sea, which is more than 2,000 times deeper than the Pacific Ocean. With each meter, the mantle will become thicker and begin to slow you down. It'll take a few weeks, and you'll finally reach the center of Uranus. There will be a small core made out of highly compressed rock iron and exotic ice. Here, your journey, as well as your life, will come to an end. We can only hope that NASA's new mission will give us enough facts about the planet to improve our plan for future colonization, or make us completely give up on the idea. What about you? Would you like to live on the gas giant? Let me know in the comments. By the way, check out this video and find out how NASA's planning to find alien life on Saturn's moon Titan. What could it really look like? 